Hey there, welcome back to the big board. I'm going to try and walk through what the process is for Carthage in the elections phase, which uh, has a fancy name in the strategic decision phase of the turn cycle. It's called the Imperium Prorogue. Uh, that's one uh, aspect of it. And then the, the detailed aspect of it is the Roman elections. And uh, there's a really nice little uh, document online on, on BGG called the Player Aid for the Magistrate Election Phase. And it's well worth having a look at to try and guide yourself through the exercise. I also uh, just put together a little uh, spreadsheet uh, for the order of election and some of the specific things that the, uh, the various different types of consuls can do, you know, how many armies can they have? Are they allowed to have Imperium or control of an army? Are they allowed to be prorogued? And we'll talk about what a prorogue is in a second. So, so there's a fairly uh, extensive process to go through, but at the end of the day, if you boil it all down, uh, you start with uh, when there's not an emergency, which means you're not losing badly, and uh, the emergencies are defined in the rules. Um, <clears throat> You know, whether it's a, a minor emergency or a major emergency, how close the enemy is to Rome, are they sieging a city within a certain distance of Rome, are there, uh, uh, have you, you know, suffered two major defeats of X percentage of losses, things like that. That would be a major uh, emergency and a minor emergency is uh, a couple of losses or, uh, or whatever the case might be. Anyway, you can look those things up because they're not hard to find out, right? But uh, what typically happens is there are two consuls and every year in the Republican system there were two consuls elected and they had power for a year. And one was the Roman consul, the Rome consul, and one was a field consul. And they're basically identical except for one or two little things. And then when you roll down the food chain, and it is a food chain in terms of uh, who can uh, make others do what. Uh, there were proconsuls, and then there's the Praetor Urbanus, and then there are a regular Praetors. And you, you may not use Praetors very often, uh, but, but you certainly will use several proconsuls uh, uh, through your turn. So, the election process is very simple. You pull the shit out, and you put it next to the guys in this order except if there's a dictator or a need for a dictator, and then you will pull chits for these two chaps. And you just randomly pull and assign these chits. Now, the only time you don't do that is if A, you're besieged, or B, you had a triumph in the previous turn, and a triumph is a significant victory. So uh, if, that, if that's the case, then you, uh, you, you may try and you may uh, apply to put that a uh, chap who had the triumph and uh, and apply that to him, right? Now, um, there's the concept of proroguing. And proroguing simply means that uh, you want the leader that's on the board who you like to stay on the board in that turn. Well, you can't be Rome console two turns in a row, or field console two turns in a row. So what you do is you prorogue them down to a pro console. And so I would grab, uh, you know, I grab a leader. He was Rome console last year, and I really like this guy because he's an amazing leader with a D, which is the second worst. And so I want to keep him on the board, and I will want to prorogue him to there. The other thing that might happen is that uh, the field console is stuck. Uh, being besieged in Masana, and we want to keep him in there, and so he would be prorogued into uh, a proconsular position as well, I believe. All right. So both of those, guys, both of these roles can be prorogued. There's a nice term for you. Okay. So now, one thing that does happen if I, if you prorogue, say, uh, a field consul into uh, or a consul, in, you prorogue them into a proconsular position if they're besieged, they can actually stay in, they stay in the hex, in the besieged hex, but you can still put a new leader in there, the pro, a new proconsul, uh, or is that proconsul? See, here we go, this is where it all gets confusing. Uh, <coughs> right. 
the old console will stay in command with the command capability of a proconsul until the siege is lifted. And at that time, he is removed and the new magistrate takes over. Yes. Okay. So, so that's that's one of the one of the other little nuances that you can you can actually end up having two leaders in one hex if it's a besieged city. But when the siege is lifted, then the the original chap leaves and the other magistrate takes over. Now, proconsuls can be prorogued as well. So if you want to keep a proconsul on the board, you can simply uh, roll him over to the next year, uh, assuming that he had a, a province assigned to him. That's one of the that's one of the preconditions for that. And there's also some other uh, conditions for uh, proroguing consuls, consuls uh, which army are they going to be applied, uh, applied to. Uh, ideally, you want to apply them to one where there's a, a consular army in the same province as the magistrate, or a consular army in the magistrate's assigned province, or another available consular army. So it's fairly, fairly flexible from that, from that perspective. Uh, praetors, uh, these chappies down here, uh, each praetor that's not being prorogued uh, as a praetor goes back into the bucket. And uh, if he is being prorogued as a praetor, his office and his imperium, i.e. who he's allowed to control and who he is controlling, stay the same. And he remains in his current hex and we pop a, a counter in the cup to have him uh, be worked on, to be pulled. Now, his, uh, his, so there's, that's basically what the elections are. There are more uh, little bits and pieces to it, but that is in essence what happens. If you manage to get some of those things wrong, I don't think it's going to cause a massive issue. Uh, you're allowed, there are all sorts of little nuances where you're allowed to, at some certain points in a turn, uh, you're allowed to swap your Imperium. So what are you controlling? I'm controlling an army. Oh, I want to control a, uh, a Navy. Okay, well, certain guys can do that. And in fact, I, I, can, I made a little list of those, a summarized list of, a list of those. Um, the ability to uh, switch Imperium. And most of these things are going to require Senate approval. This, you know, and nearly everything you do will require Senate approval if you want to leave a province or, uh, or something of that nature, enter Rome, whatever the case may be. So, for instance, the, the, the consuls can switch Imperiums and the dictator uh, can switch Imperiums uh, but proconsuls and praetors cannot switch imperiums. So once if they start as an admiral, they end up as an admiral for the turn. Now here's an interesting uh, little tidbit. I need to make sure I'm pointing out the right number on the board, on the counter. Yeah, here we go. So this number here on the left, the two, that number is the, is the initiative number for the unit. That means that any given uh, proconsul or field consul uh, can only be activated that many times in a given turn. So he'll have either two operations phases, or if he has an initiative of three, he'll have three operations phases. Or if he has an initiative of one, like this loser here, uh, he will uh, only have one activation. And the only, uh, the only uh, exception to that is if you're a Praetor, and if you're a Praetor, you only get one activation anyway, regardless of how many uh, initiative points you have. All right, that's probably more than enough for one little session, so we'll leave it there and we'll talk to you soon.